Hi everyone, Al again. Today we're going to show you how to do a push button system. If you've got one of these push button type systems and it's not flashing, um, there are two different types. One that is sort of fairly easy to do, uh, and that's this one, um, and another one I'm going to show you back home, not quite so easy. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to do one. If you've got one of these push button systems and it's not flashing, um, I'm going to take you through how to do it. Um, first of all, get your water off if you can easily. Uh, use your little tap down the side there, and there, there's ours here. Okay, so just get a screwdriver and turn it sideways on. Um, once you've done that, that will be the water off. So just get your, your screwdriver in there. Okay, and turn it into the off position. Can we get it going? This one hasn't been turned for a while. bit stiff but don't worry about it that's it we're nearly there and we're off okay once you've got that off um, next thing you'll find is that the lid is fixed you won't be able to lift it off it's it's gripped now obviously there's a screw holding that down now you may be wondering where that screw is well I can tell you where it is it's under here you've got to push one of the buttons down okay and then lift one of them out of a screwdriver which I'll show you now Okay, so put your screwdriver down in there and pop one of these buttons up. Okay, um, there comes our first one. Um, you can see it coming up there. Just pull it out. You can remember which way around they are. They've got little rods on them. Okay, you can lay them down at a side here and you can lay them right way around so that you know um, which way around they are. And pull, pull the other one up. Sorry, I'll get the camera in focus there for you. Pull the other one up, pull it out also, and click it down on the floor there and you'll know which way around they are. Although it is quite accessible. Uh, once you look down inside here, you'll see a screw, and that's what's holding the lid on. So now we've got to undo that screw. Okay, so I'm sorry I have to do this one-handed because uh, obviously I'm holding the camera with the other hand. I've got no one with me today to hold the camera. So once we've loosened that screw, I can feel it's come loose now, and the lid will now come away. Okay, exposing the valve which is, they call them a Gebet valve, it's a German type name, a Gebet, Gebet, whatever you'd like to pronounce, this is the valve, okay, that's uh, causing the problem that's not flashing. Now, I'm only showing you this toilet, this toilet actually flushes and works, um, I'm just showing you what to do if it didn't, um, and obviously, if it didn't flush, once the water was off, you'd have to bail the water out, okay, with a cup or anything, bail it all out, um, get all the water out of it, um, and then, you can remove this valve. Now this valve, this particular type, some of them have little pinch rails in down that you can grab and it will enable the valve to pull out. But this particular one pulls out fairly easily. So I've had them out before. You can just grab it like so and pull it up. But uh, this one's been out a couple of times, but normally if you see that little fleck there, that little bit there that I'm showing the camera on, and that bit there, okay, those two have to be pinched in with your finger. So I'll put it back in there and just show you. Normally, you'd have to pinch that with your finger there, okay, with that thumb there, and that finger around there, and then pull the whole thing up out of the system. Now, look, as you can see, um, the water just pours straight in through it once it's up. This device uh, has got lots of little levers, adjusters on it to bring the height of this thing up and down to fit individual systems, okay? So when you get your new one, you because I wouldn't advise trying to repair one of these, uh, as you can see, there's there's too many complicated little pieces in there that you probably wouldn't be able to buy separately anyway. So the best thing is to just change this whole Gigbert unit, change the whole thing for another one, okay? Uh, and then what you can do is lay this one alongside the new one uh, and adjust the height so that they're both the same. And then you know that when you fit the new one, um, it's just gonna slip straight back in. When you get your new one, it should just fit in the same housing, but thankfully they seem to have remained the same. So once you get your new one, stick it straight in there, you'll feel it click in, okay? She's in there now, she's clicked. It didn't make much of a click, but it's in. Um, now we know the height of this one is, is proper, but if you are putting a new one in, just get it so that it's just a little bit above the lip of the system, because they will click down as you put the screw and the lid on. So don't have it too low, just have it above the system there, okay, just protruding above, just like that, 
and you'll find the screw will go back in. So it's pretty simple now, literally, um, we just get our lid, we've got your new um, gig burst siphon in there, um, get the lid, pull it back up, put your, your little clip bit in there, okay, and get your screw back down up into the siphon. So we'll just do him back up in there. This will hold it nicely back in place. So get him back in there, make sure he's square there. Okay, I'll just put a camera down while I hold it with the other hand. Hold on a second, everybody. Okay, so I just want you to tighten that in, um, simply because I need to hold that steady in place, because you want to keep it nice and square. Uh, you, those two holes have got to be level with one another, okay? So we get a, a little green left one, which has already been cut to shape. You'll get new ones with your, um, your, 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 your diaphragm, your siphon, when you buy it, your gig burr, um, and you can just use these as, as this if you want to, or cut the new ones down, they just chop off with a pair of pliers, and just stick it straight back in the hole. Okay, so it just goes back in there, and we'll fasten him back down. Hold on a second. Let's get him sorted out. Get him in there. That's one in. Okay, now we'll get the other one. And you can see the half moon shape fits in with that one. So they both lock in there together, and now they're, they're in position. So now we'll just turn our water back on. Um, get the screwdriver again and get the valve on down there you can just see him down there so it's a little bit dark again that's how the sun's gone in we'll turn him on and that's it we're back on and uh, that should be it we'll let her fill up and we'll do a flush in a second when she's filled up Okay, I can hear that it's now nearly finished, so we'll give them a push now, and this is your, was your new siphon, your new Gigbert siphon now, it would just go as such. Um, it's just working nicely, um, and really that's about it, that's the size of the job. But well, I'm going to show you a newer one now. This particular siphon, um, it was put in this house, this whole system, um, in 2003, so roughly this obviously is 10 years old, so if you've got a 10 year old um, siphon such as this one um, then um, it's very very easy to do but I will show you um, the newer one that I've got in another house which I'll take you to now and uh, things aren't quite as simple so I'll take you to that one now. Okay well now I'm at home uh, and the newer push button system this one is, is just two years old and it's different again from the old gig work um, push button and this is why really you've got to get the siphons right and why you must take your one to the dealer to get the correct one and I'll show you why because if I take the lid off this one you notice straight away it's not screwed down if you take it off you'll see the buttons there are affixed through the lid um, and it's a different type of procedure altogether if you look at this one um, so here we have a different model I will put the lid down on the floor for you um, and once again we'll shut the water off um, and show you how to do this one. Um, as I say, it's a completely different um, type of Gigbert system. Um, this flush siphon is altogether different. But don't worry, don't threat it. It looks, it's, it's bolted through. And at first I thought, oh God, it's bolted. If you can see the bolts through the bottom, it's got to all come out. But no, it still doesn't have to. But I will show you now why we have to make sure that um, you get the right one. So we turn the valve off there. Okay, she's off, and we'll flush the, the system, and flush her out, put your finger on the button, let it go right to the bottom. Now then, the reason why this particular system is different is because it doesn't have a pull switch down there to pull it off, there's no levers to pull it off, um, but what you have got to do is just twist it, and once you get it in the right direction, it's usually about there, it lifts away. So as you can see now, this is a different type of Gbert type flush push button system thing. Um, completely different to the other one. Um, this one moves the arm up and down for different levels in the system so that you get it to the right height. Um, and basically, really, if it's gone and it's not working, uh, you best take this whole thing along um, to make sure you get the right one. And as you can see down there, a uh, different arrangement altogether. Um, but basically, when you get your new one, um, we just plop it straight back in. You can see the, the little plunger there that runs up and down. Uh, so I wouldn't try trying to repair these if it's gone. Uh, just get another one. It's just too too much in there um, to sort out. And I doubt if you'd get the bits anyway. So just, just insert your 
you, you, you put it back in there and you fill it drop in, you can fill it drop down and just pull the buttons round so that they're back in the, in the right position again. Okay, once you're back there, um, we can safely put the lid back on. I'm doing all this one-handed. Um, and the buttons should line up as before and um, you're back in business. Turn the water back on and that's it. So they're the two type of different Gibbert type flush push button um, handles that you can get. Um, they're two different types. So that is why you must, most importantly, um, have a look at them and take them along to your plumbing shop if you've got one gone and make sure you get the correct one. Um, I haven't come across any others, but there may be other different types out there. So the story is, whatever type it is that you take out, make sure you take that along and get the correct one for your system. So that's it. Um, well, thanks very much for watching. Um, it's always been a bit of a long one, but uh, it's one of those that needed sorting out because someone wrote to me saying that um, another job I'd done on a system that was leaking water into the pan, their Gigbert um, siphon was different to the one I'd shown. So I'm hoping I've covered both now, but if there's any others, I apologize. Uh, I may not come across it yet. Um, but that's all you mainly got to do. Take the old one out, take it with you, get a replacement, job done. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Uh, all my videos, Darren33. Thanks again. Bye-bye.